everybody's beauty here. So, summer's over. It's a new month. It's September, which means cold weather, more Starbucks, and school. And I remember being in school and being in art school and being excited and being frustrated and being like, oh my god, what am I going to do? I thought I would make a video to help you guys who go to art school this semester to get, to get a little, help you feel a little less stressed and a little more excited about it and be a little more prepared in what you're going to do. See, most art schools, they ask for you to have your supplies with you or they give you supplies. Like, I went to Art Institute of New York City, so my first year, I was given a bunch of supplies like pencils and guest books and, and boards and I was very happy. Most schools, some schools don't do that. So I decided to make, so make a list of what I think the basic supplies of each artist should have. Especially if you go to art school and you're new to art and you don't know what to get and you don't, or you don't know what to buy. So I'm going to give you a list and I'm going to show you some basic things you should have as a, as a beginning artist starting art school. Okay, so let's get started. One of, one of the most common and most basic items to have as an artist, no matter if you're art school, if you're a professional artist, if you're a beginner, if you're like an amateur artist, or you think you're on the top of the world and you're a pro. So every artist should have a sketchbook. A sketchbook. Now there are tons and tons of kinds of sketchbooks out there. There are hardbound sketchbooks. There are spiral sketchbooks. There are tape down sketchbooks. You can make your own sketchbook, get this paper and put it in a binder and call it a sketchbook. Whatever it is, you need to have something where you can keep all your drawings, all your ideas you have for projects, anything you think you're ahead of you think you can come into a project, you gotta write it down or draw it out and keep it somewhere neat and organized. So this is a sketchbook. This is a hard bound sketchbook. It's a regular sketchbook. I got this at Blick a long time ago. I haven't used it at all. Some people, see some people don't really use sketchbooks and I'm one of them. Even though I have this one, I haven't used it yet at all. I had months now. But I don't really use it because I keep a notebook. I keep a tiny little notebook, a little black book in my purse every day. And I write down ideas I have for, I, for projects. And usually those projects, use those ideas become projects in the future. So you can do that as well. If you're not, if you're not into one and keeping drawings all the time and sketching all the time, you just want to write down little ideas, little notes. Keep a little notebook and carry with you every day you go. It's a good idea. I've been doing it for years now. It's worked for me very well. But if you're a beginner artist and you're just in school, I suggest you keep a sketchbook. It will, it will be required for you to be in school, for, for, for you in school. So it's a good idea to have a sketchbook if you're beginning. And this is a, this is a hard bound, it looks, it's a hard bound book. It's hard, there's no spiral. The pages are binded in, so it's hard to, to tear the pages out. But if you're beginning and you're starting art school, I suggest you get a spiral with a wire curl at the, at, at the spine of it. Those are easier because you can tear the pages out and give them to your teacher and the day you have the assignment, he wants to get it, which you, he wants to collect it, you need to just tear it out and give it to him. Also, it's, it's they're much affordable than hardbound. Hardbound is a little more expensive and it could based on the edge are bigger, they more thing with expensive spirals are usually ten dollars and under depending where you get it from depending on the store so guess book number one thing to have we'll always have a guess book okay basic thing that's number one the next thing is a cutting board this is a cutting mat actually this is a cutting mat if you have a desk and you don't want to ruin your desk if you don't want to you're cutting paper and you want to uh don't have your, you have your desk because you don't want to destroy it you want to get marks on it use a cutting board when you're cutting down Cut the paper on the board with your box cutter or your knife and cut on the board. It's made to heal itself. So if it gets so if it cuts in it, you won't see it cut because it will heal itself. Heal selfie. That's good. The next thing is essential that you have a sketch book. You need something to write this guest book in, right? Exactly. So pencils. I'm obsessed with pencils. I have tons of them. These are just some of them. These are uh, these are charcoal pencils, and I have a white charcoal pencil. For pencils can come all different sizes and mediums and strengths, and it doesn't doesn't have to be special pencil. I just dropped one on the floor. Excuse me. Um, this is a cedar general cedar point. I love these ones. These are really going for. I have a bunch of these. I may have, I may have to get more of these. Cause I'm running out of them. They only come in like total box. I need to get more. So pencils are essential to have for each other's guests, but you can use a pen if you want to, but yes, 
pencil because you know maybe make mistakes you can erase so that's good also markers there are tons of markers in the world all different kinds and brands and points and thicknesses and colors you don't if you want to be fancy and go buy a $200 set of markers that's your choice but you don't have to you can be simple and buy simple markers my markers I have right now I use been using lately are sharpies I use sharpies most of my drawings as well they are great just like this these are the fine point sharpies there's chisel point too there's extra fine point there's medium thick medium point sharpies um they're just regular markers you can you can depend on it's your choice there's, there's no specific perfect marker out there everybody's have this it's a marker as long as you have good colors the colors you like a good good a good marker you're good that you need also let's see what's there i have a whole table here of things i'm showing you uh rulers you need rulers this is a 12 this is the foot long ruler you need uh, good to have foot long ruler. You need to have oven size rulers. Also, you should have a T square. This is a very large ruler. This is a T square. A T square is 20 inches. It's much bigger. Be careful with the pointer. It will sharp. I've almost killed my own subway with this thing because it's sharp at the edges. So be careful when you're holding this. Um, I also have an 18 inch ruler. So it's good to have rules in different sizes. So start collecting some rulers. You, you appreciate them. Also, erasers. I have tons of erasers here. This is a kneaded eraser, and this is a fast eraser. Fast erasers are mostly for charcoal, erasing charcoal. But I use it for anything because I realize they're better than kneaded erasers. They erase more, and, and you don't get a pen pencil line after that there kind of thing. Kneaded erasers are really good. They come out. They start out as squares like this, but then you have over time more you use them, they come into squishy pieces of clay like this. Like, this is my little like, piece of rock now because I have squeezed it so many times. It's kind of addictive. They're kind of obsessive to play with. But they're really good erasers. They erase good, but I prefer faceted black erasers, even though they're for charcoal. I use a pencil as well because they're much better. See, I've already used it a bit already. So I, that's why I have backups because if this is gone, got backup. I can do that. So, erasers, race, good to have. Keep them. Use them a lot to, to do you well. Also, pencil sharpener, basic, simple, see, three half pencil sharpener, keep pencil sharp. You now, good point, good to have for artists, keep the sharpener. Um, also, not that you're in school, you need to have books. Some your school will probably require you to have certain books for classes that you need. Also, but you should also have a little collection, a library, a collection of art books at home that you can read on your own and, keep, and for your own learning, you know, on your own educational. So these are pretty good books I have from my, when I was in school. The graphic design, the design basics. I did a video on my favorite design books, and so you should look at the video. I'll link that in below. But these are design books. I, these ones I do really do like. Design basics. Graphic design basics. They're probably a new one. This this is old. And this the other one here is uh, the design color manual. This is really good. It's about color. It's about color theory. Cause I took a color theory class. And this is my book I used in that class. It's a Really good book. You probably would end up using this pencil in school we go to. Um, also, also, computers are important. If you're into doing graph design, if you're into web design, animation, graph design, anything artistic or digital art, you need a computer. A computer will help you a lot. It's not everything, but it will help you get your work done faster and much easier and much required. You can use computers in school. You can have your own computer at home. If you don't have one, it's good to purchase one. Do not go out and buy the most expensive computer because everybody else has one. Fortunately, I do have a Mac, and Macs are expensive. But I prefer Macs because I think they're better for designers as well. They're recommended in the design world. PCs are good. I'm not against PCs. I know people think Macs and PCs are the same thing, but my personal preference is Macs. You have your own personal preference, what you feel it's for a few what you can afford in your budget. Please don't go out and buy three dollars computer because someone because it's the latest thing. Be with, buy what you what you need and what's in your means. Okay? But a computer is a very good thing to have, especially when you're in art school and want to be a professional artist. Good thing to have. Um also, external hard drive. That you have a computer, you go you have all these files, your project, you do stuff in Photoshop and all these things. You need to somewhere to keep 
all your files organized. So I have an external hard drive. This is my little buddy. This is brand new. He's only been, I got it, I would say a month ago. Yes. This, I used to have a, wasn't digital one. It was a bigger one, but I had it for years and it broke down. So I had to get a new one and upgrade. So, but it was all my stuff. And I can't do that. Woo! That would have been scary. So I went out and my husband suggested I get the Seagate. It's a very good one. I'm, I'm really liking it. I'm all, all surprised as this tiny, even though this is a portable one, it's, it's very small. You can put it in your bag, in your backpack, and it's very good. It's USB, USB is right there. This is a one terabyte, so it's a lot of space on here. It was about, like I said, Best Buy. It was about uh, $80, I think. Yeah, it was, it was a thing on sale. It was a pretty good deal. And I'm glad I got it. It was a very good, it was a very good purchase. So this is worth worth buying and worth having. You need external hard drive to keep your stuff organized and backed up because you don't want to lose any files you have on your computer. So external hard drive. And that's CD. And what else was there? Uh, it's, oh, and this is a bigger. If you have a very large desk and you have a cutting board, a cutting mat like this, this is a small cutting mat. I also have a large cutting mat. This is a big one. See, my desk is kind of big, so this is good size for my desk. But I don't use I use this when I'm doing a bigger work or bigger projects kind of well. But it's good to have all sizes. And also, when I was in art school, in the pack in my uh, freshman package was all the supplies they gave me. They also gave me a travel size board. It's not just look for a travel size, a travel size drawing board. So let's say I had a field trip and my class went out to drawing to the park somewhere. We needed something to lean on. So they gave us boards, drawing boards. This is massive. See, it's so big. It's, I can feel like I can show you in the camera, but it's very bad. I should stand up and show you this. Let me stand up. Hold on. It's very big. You see how big this is? And there's a handle right up there somewhere. Yeah, there is the handle. And clipboards here like this. The pay, you put your paper in here. So let's say your paper is like 17 by 14 or something. You need big pieces of paper. You put it in here. And you can draw it. It's very handy. You carry it around. It's very light. It's very big. So the only thing is. So that's the drawing board of that. It's good to have it. I don't know if all schools give that give it out, but they do add art and stew, and I was happy to get get it because didn't know if you needed it, but I still have it. I use it and it's still this day. Um, what else? Oh, printers. Now you have a computer and then you have your hard drive. Sometimes you work and you can print it out. You can print in school, but it's good to have a printer at home for your own personal access, for your own personal use as well. I used to have a HP inkjet printer, so like upgraded and I got a Canon printer which is I love it's wonderful it's kind of big but it's great it prints 13 by 19 paper so the wide paper not the average size so I can print all different sizes like great I've had it for a few months now it's beautiful I'm like in love with it so please don't purchase a pr printer that's affordable Please don't buy expensive printer that you still need to buy that you need to buy expensive printer buy one that's affordable um, my printer was, I would say, 180 I think. It was on sale at B&H. Very good. I will link all the information below. I think my printer is still available. There are other versions of it that are more expensive, but I will find it and show you which one I have. So maybe you want to purchase or not, but it's up to you. But buy one that you can afford that's not two months that can make you cringe and put a hole in your wallet. Like, please don't do that. Um, what else there? Oh, the last thing. I got this to hold all my stuff. You have all this stuff you need to hold for art school, like your drawing board and your cutting board and all this drawing stuff. You need something on your backpack and not enough. You need, you need like an art and portfolio to carry with you on your shoulder. So this is what I have as well. It's by Art Bin. I've had it for a while. I keep it now as storage because and not art school anymore, so I keep it short. This is what it is. It is wonderful. It's by Artbin. It's a portfolio case. Like it has huge pockets. It fits the drawing board, the white drawing board I just showed you, and the matte board down here. It's wonderful. It has little pockets in the front, deep pockets, and you put pencils in here, and markers, and more stuff in here, and erasers. You put paper, your sketchbooks in here. 
It's a huge pocket in the back here for more stuff in here. This is a very good thing to have. I think it's still available. Blake will probably have it in different forms, sizes, and colors, but it's wonderful. It's very good to have. It's, it can get heavy depending on how much stuff you put in here, but to keep them organized and to hold yourself all around, it's really good to have, I suggest you. And it's not really expensive. I think this is like 20 bucks. It's not really expensive. So, purchase one. It's really good. So, that is all there is. I hope this helped you a lot. Um, I will find information, all this stuff, and link it at the bottom below so you all can link it and probably buy it, get it if you want to buy it as well. And I wish you all good luck this semester in school. Study hard, be creative, think of wonderful ideas. Um, and I will see you next time. Bye!